Understanding the Enormous Impact and the Cost of Upset, Part 2. I want you to see yourself in the following life story, and then after the story, we will look at the upsets and how they are driven from your past experiences. Before we start, I just want to say that this story is told in order to understand upsets. The diagrams and the actual science of how it works is a lot more complicated than this example. It is, however, a good place to start. So let's imagine that this is your head. And lining the walls are filing cabinets that hold all your memories, both good and bad. Information comes into your mind and finds a similar memory or situation to file with it. Dog and cat are filed here under pets. Tigers and lions under zoo and so on. These memories are easily filed if there is no negative emotion associated with them. If there is a negative emotion associated with the experience, then the memory stays in the frontal or the sorting area of the mind. It doesn't get filed away and sits there until a similar experience happens again. In that moment, the negative emotion of the original incident will rear its ugly head and you will feel like it's all happening all over again. This is called re-stimulation, a reminder from the past. Imagine now that you're a two-year-old child lost alone in a supermarket. Suddenly you can't find your mum, your nurturer and your protector has vanished. The very person who should be looking after you is gone. Welling up into the present moment is a huge upset and you feel lost, alone and abandoned. Your mummy is gone. There are lots and lots of people around, but they're just not the right ones. Meanwhile, your mum is running around in a flat panic looking for you. She finally finds you instead of being an enlightened and modern educated mum, she tells you off. You naughty child, running away like that scaring the hell out of me. She grabs you and drags you around the supermarket as you cry loudly and make a terrible noise. At the checkout, mum grabs a Mars bar and feeds you with it to shut you up. Consider this series of emotions at the age of two. Lost, alone, abandoned, lots of other people around, but not the right ones. My nurturer and protector finally rescues me and now abuse is laid in on top. Then food to shut down the emotional outburst. This is the first link in the chain of lost, alone and abandoned. Now you're at school, age six, playing hide and seek. You cover your eyes and count while your friends hide. They hide so well that after five minutes of looking, you can't find them. Your friends are gone and welling up into the present moment comes the same emotion at the supermarket incident. You feel lost, alone and abandoned, lots of other people around, but not the right ones. So you start crying. Your friends come running out of their hiding places, pat you on the back, tell you it's all right and stop crying. Your teacher comes along and gives you a jelly baby to shut you up. At the age of six, you are learning that it's not okay to cry and express negative emotions. Others will want to shut your emotional discharge down because they feel uncomfortable and food is a great way to comfort your upset. That's the second link in the chain of being lost alone and abandoned. Now you're a big kid, age 15, at the Royal Show. You agreed to meet your six childhood friends at the North Entrance. You're excited and early and waiting for them. Soon, standing there alone and waiting, worry and panic creeps in as the meeting time passes. You doubt yourself and wonder if you're in the right place. You run to the West Entrance and your friends are not there. Returning to the North Entrance, you are now in a flat out panic. Welling up into the present moment is the feeling of being lost, alone and abandoned. All the other people around and they're not the right ones. Your six friends finally arrive and now you're a big grown up 15 year old and you are definitely not going to cry. So you rush inside with your friends and buy a hamburger and stuff it down to suppress your negative emotions. That's the third link to the chain of lost, alone and abandoned. Now you're 20, 30, 40 or 50 and it's your first day in a new job. You are keen and excited, but the only person you know is the boss who hired you, and he's interstate. Your new manager meets you at reception, hands over the induction manual and sits you in a small cubicle. You hear and see other people doing their work, unfamiliar voices and things, and welling up into the present moment comes a lifetime of feelings of being lost, alone and abandoned. All these people around and they are not the right ones. 10 o'clock comes along and you rush off for a coffee and a muffin to suppress your negative emotions and feed your upset. Another link in the chain of lost, alone and abandoned and food to suppress the emotion. 
Now, it doesn't matter how old you are or how wonderful your childhood was or wasn't. We all have these chains of emotional responses tied up with real life experiences that can be triggered at any moment in time. When your chain gets rattled or your memory gets triggered by something similar to a past experience, welling up into the present moment will come the feelings that are the same as the ones you experienced in the past. You will feel like it's happening all over again. This is what is called being re-stimulated, reminded of a past experience and feeling the emotions that came with that past experience. This is why it's so scary for some people to speak in public. Often there is little or no conscious memory of the original incident, just a feeling of terror whenever the prospect of stepping up and speaking in public arises. Very young children have no fear of speaking and making a noise in public because they have as yet no negative emotional memories of it. That's the end of part two. Please complete the quiz and proceed to part three.